We're leaving on our trip, headed towards Lebanon, Tennessee, to the Airstream International Rally, with a couple of stops before we get there. Right. If you know anything about us, it's not the destination, it's the journey. So we've got some stops in West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, and Tennessee that we're looking forward to doing, too, on the way there. So I guess we better get going. Yep. Almost 8 o'clock. Yep. Yeah, our goal was to get out on the road by 8 o'clock. You ready, Monty? Yes. Ready for whatever. <laughs> as long as I'm going. Right. drive ahead of us. We had about eight hours to get to our destination for the night, which is a Harvest Host. Now, if you've never stayed at a Harvest Host or are not a member, be sure to use our discount code in the description below to join Harvest Host and save yourself 15% on your membership. We really like Harvest Host because they're a great way to spend the night when you're on the road for the day and you don't really want to go into a campground and spend that cost. You can go to a private winery or golf course or something and spend your money with them and get something for it like a nice bottle of wine or something that you can use later. Well we're here at our Harvest House so let's go check the place out. spent the night at a Harris Host location, which was a winery, Lambert's Vintage Wines. It's located in Weston, West Virginia. It was a, a very pleasant night, and it's a nice location, a little bit off the beaten path, but definitely well worth the drive. It was quiet, and there's a nice winery inside, taste testing. They do have events here lots of shade for the dogs so it was a good night one of the nice things we found was last night it was still pretty warm and humid and they do have some nice seating in the shade which we enjoyed for quite a while with the dogs the dogs enjoyed it and now we're getting ready to go this morning and we're heading to our next destination which will be the Kentucky Horse Park 
in Lexington, Kentucky. We're going to be staying at the campground there for a few nights and take the opportunity to check out Lexington, Kentucky, a place we've never been before and we're really looking forward to seeing this. Well, all rides do have a little bit of rain in them and unfortunately today we ran into a little rainstorm but luckily it didn't last long and we were able to drive through it and get back to sunny weather. Our drive today wasn't that long and we were able to get to our destination pretty quickly. We just had a quick stop for lunch and a little bit of gas and we pulled into the campground. Now this is a really nice campground. I believe it is a state park and the campsites are very nice size and very roomy. Unfortunately this trip we did not take a lot of video of the campground. We were fairly busy outside the campground and when we were at the campground it, unfortunately it was a little bit on the rainy side a couple of times. So we didn't get out and take a lot of video but there is a lot to do here. A lot of walking paths and such and here's just a little bit of, bit of the video of our campsite as we pull in so you can check it out here and check out the size of the sites. They look very nice. Lexington, Kentucky. We're actually downtown and we parked here at the First Baptist Church and we're heading over to the Mary Todd Lincoln House, which is one of the attractions here. In case you don't know, Mary Todd Lincoln was married to Abraham Lincoln, who was one of the presidents of the United States. And then we're going to kind of explore downtown Lexington and see what other attractions we can find. So let's get going. And this is Mary's home until she left for Illinois. Yeah, age 20, she lived with a sister, and of course you know what happened up there. Uh, she met somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Her father, though, stayed here until his death in a cholera epidemic in 1849. And the house became a commercial property for more than 100 years after that. Uh, we're doing self-guided tours, so we took the ropes down in all the rooms so everybody could see everything up close. So I just remind everyone not to touch anything. The one exception to that rule is the banister, which Abraham Lincoln used when he was here. And they're used every day, so get in touch with the family. We have signs out in every room. And uh, take any pictures you like, just please don't use your flash or record. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll try to answer for you. We're sitting in the gardens behind the Mary Todd Lincoln House in Lexington, Kentucky. And we just got done touring the house. What'd you think? I loved it. I love looking at these older homes and museums, especially something like this that really is part of the history of our country. And I love seeing the rooms and all the furniture and the uh, pictures and all the explanations of what the pictures are. Plus they have a few tour guides. It is a self-guided tour, but they do have people walking around telling you about the different pieces of furniture, or the pictures, the rooms. It was very interesting. And some of the pictures were just um, hung on the walls and they were uh, original uh, family portraits that 
you know the museum just acquired plus there's also uh, a lot of the furniture is original um, if it's not original it's period correct and it would be a what was in the house originally so they do have an inventory of all the furniture that was in the house and they've tried very hard to reproduce not reproduce but find representative uh, pieces of furniture from that time period and if they do find another piece of furniture they will original furniture they will purchase it yeah if the original furniture becomes available they will purchase it and use it for the home or a lot of times it's donated some family members still have pieces of furniture that have donated it to the museum and you know stuff comes available you know over time and they try to get it for the museum yes it was it was fun there is an entrance fee to view the house but for me i thought it was well worth it yeah it's 15 dollars per person to come on to come in and view the home itself like diane said self-guided tours and you can reserve online they only allow 15 people at a time through the home and that's I don't even think that's really COVID related and it's really just size related. It's not a huge home, the rooms aren't very large and you want some room to be able to walk through and have some space as you look at things. Well, let's continue our tour of Lexington. Okay. Lexington Public Library to see the world's largest ceiling clock. It is right here and you have to look up into the atrium into the center and we're really not quite sure how it works or what time it's saying. It looks like it's if that's what moves it's not moving and it says it's 12 o'clock, which it's not. So, not, not sure if it's operating. But the pendulum is moving. So, I don't know. But it's, it's pretty neat to see. It's 2.03. See? World's smallest wristwatch. Okay. <laughs> well, then I... I don't think it's operating correctly. I don't think it either. I don't see this hands on it. Yeah. So, I'm not quite sure. Right. Anyway, we just wanted to see it, or I wanted to see it. So, that's it. Okay. While in Kentucky, we're visiting the Kentucky Horse Park, the National Horse Center. So, we're going to. Uh, and probably see a lot of horses. So come along for our visit. Now I've heard that this is like an amusement park for horse people. We start a day at the Kentucky International Horse Park by going through the museum and where we got to see some of the history of horses and some of the famous horses like Man of War. We got to learn about them and, and uh, Secretariat who's, who both are happen to be buried here. Yeah. Um, we, we got to do that, and then where did we go next? We went to the, the Hall, of, Hall Champion. of Champions show and got to view three former champions. Yeah, and we'll show you some video of those now. Now first is a horse who won the Kentucky Derby and just celebrated monumental birthday. He turned 30 years old this year. His derby was in 1994, and his name is Go For Jim. Now, going into the Derby all the way back in 94, he had a lot of things going for him. For one thing, he was surrounded by people who had not just had experience riding in the Derby, but they had won it before, too. 
His trainer, Nick Zidel, together with his owners, Mr. Condren and Cornaccia, they're one of those kind of New York names, uh, they worked together in 91 with Strike the Gold, and Strike the Gold won the Derby. So to have that incredible joy of winning what's probably the most important race to anyone who owns a young thoroughbred, Gopher Jane himself had Mother Nature in his corner for a couple reasons. For one, he was naturally a front runner. So if you have a horse who's very comfortable with getting out fast and going to the front, that's a big advantage. And also, it was raining a lot that day. For the first time in 46 years, the track was officially listed as sloppy. And that was great because Gopher Jim could, you know, win on a dry, fast track, but he also loved to run on an off track. And this is as off as it can get. It's incredibly sloppy and muddy and icky. Chris McCarron was riding Jin in the race. He had won previously with Ella Shiva. So all these things were kind of, he had a, a really good hand as far as uh, he was dealt that day. The horse that was supposed to win, the foregone conclusion, notice the air quotes, there's no such thing, they're, they're not machines, they're animals. A really good horse named Holy Bull. He would go on to be named Horse of the Year, so he wasn't just some kind of flash in the pan. Just didn't have his race, it happens, you're gonna meet another horse this afternoon who also didn't have his race during the Derby, so it's one of those things that just kinda of happens. So taking all the best parts of his Kentucky Derby, this is Gopher Jim winning the Kentucky Derby in 1994. Love this is a horse that you might not think about when you think about the Triple Crown or when you think about horse racing, especially in Kentucky, but they belong here. Uh, in, in Lexington itself, it's a great example of the diversity. On one end of town, if you go to Keeneland, that's where you see thoroughbreds like Gopher Jim Racing. On the other end of town is the Red Mile, and that's a harness racing track, and that's where you'd see horses like Western Dreamer competing. Now, Western Dreamer back in 1997, he did what Gopher Jim could not accomplish, he won the Pacing Triple Crown. So he's a Triple Crown winner. Uh, standard breads are known as harness horses. Obviously there's no jockey, there's a driver. The driver, like the jockey, has to think about the race, know his horse, know the competition. You gotta direct the horse through traffic and get that nose across the finish line first. So back in 1997, Western Dreamer, who was also a front runner, was able to do that in three races. The King Pace, the Little Brown Jug, and the Messenger Stakes. And when this horse won, he won emphatically. I believe that he did not win a race ever by a margin less than about four lengths. So he really liked to air up the field. And here is Western Dreamer. So then after the Hall of Champion show, we went over and saw the Parade of Breeds. And that was pretty neat. They showed the different horses, the different breeds of horses, like the Morgans. And, and the riders, and yeah. the riders. In costume. In costume, and they are actually the owners and trainers. Yeah, trainers of the horses that they were riding. Right. So that was very interesting. And you had to give them a lot of credit to wear those costumes today. Yes, it's. Ex I wouldn't know if it's hot, but it's just very. It's about 85 degrees and very humid. Yeah. It's supposed to rain. It hasn't rained, but it's supposed to rain. Right. What else? Well, they have a trolley here that you can take, but you can just walk around the gardens. The grounds and the gardens are very pretty. And there's a lot of uh, statues and tributes to you know famous horses here. Mm -hmm. There are a few things that aren't open at this time, like the uh, theater. The theater is not open, and it appears they used to have a cafe, and that's no longer open. Right, but they but, do have a food cart. Right. We were able to they get also have a barn for the mounted police horses. horses. Yeah. And that's interesting to see. They have horseback riding, both for children and adults, that you can sign up for while you're here. They have a children's barn. Yes, they have the children's barn. Yeah. So they have a, you know, they have a lot to see and do here. Yeah. And we really enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, we, it's something that, you know, very different. Something that we probably wouldn't have, you know, yeah, we normally, but. You know, we've never been to anything like this before. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's really, a fun place to visit if you're in or near Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, and if you stay, at, if you're camping and you're staying at the um, state park campground, where like we are, go to the campground office. You can buy your tickets there, and you will save four dollars a ticket. I think the, for the two tickets, it was thirty-six dollars. Yeah, and which, you will get free parking as well. Yep. So yeah. otherwise, that's five dollars. So you save another five dollars there. So you save almost ten dollars. Right. For the two of us. Yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah, it's turning out to be a nice day and a, really a interesting and educational thing to do. They're open, they're not open, what did I say? Monday and Tuesdays are closed, but they're open Wednesday through Sunday. Right. And it's what, nine to six? Five. Nine to five. Yeah. Yep. 
Well, let's uh, wander off. I think we gotta go find some dinner. Thanks. Something. Yep. Something. And, uh, we will oh, catch you later. Catch you later, guys. Mm -hmm. Be sure to check out our next video as we continue our journey to the Airstream International Rally. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit the bell for notifications as we post new videos on a weekly basis. We'd love to have you follow along in the journey. Until the next time, guys. We will see you down the road. Bye. Bye.